What is going on, my friends? Kevin, you're going to need your microphone for this one. Well, I'm, I'll bring it back now. Yeah. We had to restart a couple times tonight. It's not been our most seamless going, but hey, welcome in. I am Aaron, along with my good buddy Kevin, <laughs> and you're in for another one of these episodes. 41. Fat Face Podcast, number 41, where we're going to talk about some of the greatest food festivals in the world, things that you need to go to, both some local and some and some afar, but uh, we'll get to that. Before that, we've got other <laughs> sure. things to do. How are you, man? Hey, man, you've been posting some really good food on the socials, on the interwebs. Yeah. Some some really I've good been stuff. Pretty well lately, yeah. Last week we went to um, last Thursday we went to North Italia, which okay. is uh, one of my favorite chains, and I had a braised short rib. Because uh, why not? Yeah, man, it was it was special. And there yeah. was this prosciutto, and the prosciutto had like um, kind of like ricotta cheese, or it was a bruschetta, with the the toasted bruschetta bread, and then the ricotta cheese, and then some. Um, asparagus and then the prosciutto on top of that and then parmesan yeah it was not i was not yeah this is official official parmesan for or if you're at like olive garden it's this right yeah when we do this at our house it's cayenne pepper my uh i like it when you go to olive garden or something the guy's like say when and then you don't and he's like looking at it and you're like i heard yeah you're you're gonna need like a block there keep going (laughs) keep going you got like a bigger bag to hold yeah, just, you, you, you should have somebody working on this in the morning yeah man so today's september 3rd we're recording on tuesday september 3rd yesterday was labor day it was a weird labor, labor day, day. <laughs> it's been raining down here which it never does but it's been like like serious rain nearly catastrophic raining yeah. flooding uh, downtown San Antonio, flooding and yeah it's been wild so those of you that are local we hope you're uh, do you're hope doing you're well safe. but it changed my plans yesterday i was going to barbecue because you know it's the whole end of summer and i was like well let's just do burgers it'll be how you know that's that's what you do uh, but because of the rain, I ended up having right. to pivot and cook my burgers inside, which they turned out fine. But well, of course, you know, cast iron, the grill. cast iron. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, they so, were fine. They were fine. They're good. I even, I'll even say they were good. I, I enjoyed them. But uh, yeah, how's things been for you? Things have been good, man. Um, I, I told you I had one thing that I was going to throw in that we hadn't talked about beforehand. Let's do it. Um, so I went to H E B about an hour before I headed this way. So a couple hours ago, and uh, so. Like Aaron said, it's it's the day after a holiday. It's the second. It's a Tuesday, so you know it was three o'clock, two o'clock, whatever it was at the at the store, and so there were not that many people. And so maybe because there were less people is why I noticed it. But I noticed at least four shopper groups: husband, wife, mom, and kids, whoever, going through and like actively making decisions on can we get this too or mm-hmm. not. Um, and it just, it really, it just struck me. It, it, it hit a nerve differently. So what's interesting normally is, does. though I wasn't prepared for this, I am also given what I do. Sorry, wrong pocket. Uh, <laughs> we've been studying a lot of trends lately and we noticed, uh, one of the things that we just reported on for a grant is that, um, not even all the way back to COVID, but just since 2022, um, the average family in our, in our region. So we did Kendall and Bandera County is paying on average 23% more per month on grocery food. Um, but obviously salaries have not followed. So, um, there is a gap for sure. People yeah. are making decisions. Well, and the gap is, is growing. You're also it's, noticing it. I, well, I don't know if you, if you notice it, but I'm starting <laughs> to notice it even in, um, so I don't know if this is a, I don't think this is a well-kept secret, but HEB, different HEBs will have different proteins based on the socioeconomics of, of the yeah, area that they serve. The, yeah. Right. So, um, the the proteins that they've been stocking have have changed and and yeah at the higher end HEBs you can still go in and get really quality beef out of the meat case but there's also going to be a higher percentage of of pork chops or of things that are are a little more economic yeah we were at the HEB and Bernie yesterday not not the new one but the the one on okay. 40 on 46 and the lady was going one of those demos and she just made a, a statement because she was like, yeah, I just use chicken, chicken thighs. So we have a deal right now. If you spend more than $30 on pork chops or chicken thighs, and I didn't even think about it until like half of the shopping trip later, I looked at Brie and I was like $30 on chicken legs. Like yeah. that used to be like a truckload. Yeah. It, it used to be a truckload. Now it's this week's groceries. Yeah. So no, it is. I I'm, it is, but that so that's the thing that I uh, th- I don't know if people know this, but be- because of an of a, actually a congressional act in the eighties, this has nothing to do with with recent politics, right? But when they calculate inflation numbers, mm-hmm. they don't 
include, they don't include groceries food. in that in that calculation because it would throw they the don't food. include restaurant food either do they or gas i think yeah that's a separate metric and so yeah so some of those things that you wouldn't think mm-hmm. are and i mean it, it genuinely needs to be included because if you just slowly walk through the heb and, and like i said I, I think i did this in our first take <laughs> Yesterday was a holiday for everyone, but my work does a thing where either the day before or day after a holiday weekend, we also get off as a well-being day. Just yeah, a, my, my job is like, if you want well-being, come to work and be at work. Yeah. And get your check. Yeah. <laughs> but we have that. And so I had that today. And so I was really just meandering in H-E-B. You had some time to kill. And, uh, and, and really paying attention to the people that were there. And it was, um, it was stark. Yeah. Yeah. Things are different. There's not really a good way to segue into what I have for you because it's not it's not no, heavy. No, no. This is uh, we've tried on the t- uh, in the past to show some things that caught our eye. I saw a recipe on the Instagrams yesterday that made me think of you. Roll and it. So uh, here is we go. Going up there? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a um, creamy garlic chicken thighs, and I just I know how oh, you like chicken in. thighs. So yeah, they um, the marinade looked really really good. So they used a grill pan, pan but you could definitely grill them and some seasoned butter. You know, uh, I, I have that those grill pans like that, and I really like them just because they they hold the 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 juice. Yeah, they do hold the juice. So I just thought with the mashed potatoes and everything, I just thought that looked really really good. So shout out to KS Nice and Spice. That's nice uh, for their chicken recipe. You can follow them on Instagram. And look at all those spices. And, uh, yeah, and the right recipe. There. This is some red pepper, some cayenne. That's got flavor. And I think it was in the first take that we said hey, if that's you catch not... us looking up. Oh yeah, our camera is is here. We have a vanity and then we monitor have a, above that. A vanity monitor. Yeah, that's what yeah. it's called. Oh yeah, okay. In the biz. Uh, I'm not in the biz. I just do a show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wait, am I that? I'm in the biz. Am I that woman that's like, wait, I'm not a musician. I do music. Right. No, this is, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, so I just thought, I don't know. I know that's how you fantastic. like chicken. That's like fantastic. We should make that sometime. I have, from the good chop box that I get, Yeah. I have like three or four 10-ounce bags of chicken thighs. Well. And so we need to, we need to put something together. Yeah. So... Uh, we decided today we were going to talk because, um, uh, so yesterday there were actually, Labor Day weekend, there were a number of food festivals around uh, the country and the world. Uh, in fact, there was, a, I don't know if you saw on the Netflix thing, Joey Chestnut went back on and defended I his title. That. And uh, there was a New York food festival where they uh, runway modeled edible clothing. Uh, and so it got me thinking food festivals, and I just thought, um, yeah, there are no pictures of the food festival from New York. I don't want any. Um, I thought there, food festivals is one of those fun things, and so let's highlight some some food festivals from around the world that that either I would like to attend or I think that you should try to attend, or that were just funny. Uh, and I'll tell you right out of the gate, <laughs> I specifically targeted some things that had intrigue or interest. So there were other things like there's a Maine Lobster Festival. I just felt like sure. everybody knows we're going to Maine. Uh, there's yeah. New Mexico does hatch chilies. Like I get it. There's a California Avocado Festival. Yeah, I'm sure it's great, and it would be. You fun. know, I saw that. I, no, it wasn't that one. I saw the artichoke one, and it said it's in Castroville, California, and I was like. It, but I didn't see the California you're part like, in my mind. And I was we like, grow chokes here? That's weird. And I was like, what a gross thing to have, but I'd go have the other food. We, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite on the avocados, have you ever had a, um, a stuffed avocado where they take half an avocado and they stuff it with like fajita beef or fajita chicken and yes. Monterey Jack cheese and they bread the whole thing? Yes. Yeah, man. We need mm. to do that once too. Uh, so we anyway, to we're going to highlight some of those. I think I chose 10. Yeah, chose 10. Uh, but there's probably more, so we'd love to hear from you. But the first one that we came to is one held in Buñol, Spain, and it's called <laughs> La Tomatina. Uh, and it is held annually since 1945 on the last Wednesday of August. It is quite simply, Kevin, the world's largest food fight. fight. Yeah. yeah. So they use over 150,000 tomatoes over the course of the weekend. Uh, and they literally, wow. they're just, they're, they're ripe to overripe. Yeah. And you just crowd this town, and you just pelt everyone you just and everything pelt each other with tomatoes. Yeah, I don't it know. Sounds man. awesome. I, I did see not and, in any of the footage that I used, but I saw some <laughs> other videos, and there were some dudes. So there's another well, one. There's there some guys throwing like they're oh, trying dude. out for the majors. I almost posted one. I said I thought the food was a little more normal. There's one in <laughs> California that, or in Italy, that is an orange festival. They do the same with oranges. But those dudes were whipping. I, yeah. I was like, no, nah, I can't in good conscience recommend somebody no. taking 95 upside the face with an orange. You're right, with that thick leathery rind. Did you ever watch Amazing Race? 
<laughs> there was a season of Amazing Race with the where watermelon. The girl, yeah, yeah, and Bree and I were watching it as it happened. And okay. Like, so the whole deal was you had to do like the slingshot with this watermelon. So she pulls. It I back. forget what that's called. It's a medieval, like a not a catapult, thing. but yeah. A, yeah, similar. And so, uh, was it? Did it throw? Was it the arm? No, no, no it was the. It, it wasn't was the, the trebuchet. No, it was okay. the bungee one. So she pulls it back. And somehow it misfires, well, and she the lets watermelon it go. shoots right back into her face. She lets it go, and it goes. And somehow the thing turned over, right. and it brought it back. And it in real time, I thought either she was dead, or it was one of those cartoon moments <laughs> where it knocked her head off, and the watermelon became her head. <laughs> It really could have been the second one. Yeah, I actually, um, which would have been really cool. It, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, in, in a way. Yeah, so they say, uh, along with the food fight, the event includes parades, music, dancing, fireworks, all lead up to the main event. And I guess what I would say is if you've never been to Spain, which I have not, but I, I would love to go, I'm the, the, the culture of Spain seems fascinating to me yeah. anyway. Like, I mean, the yeah. paella and all the good food. But I'm just in it for the siesta, my man. Oh, Spain had the greatest idea in the history of the world. And it's 2024, like, and they're still just like, you know what feels good at 2 p.m.? A nap. A nap. I'll see you boys at 5. Right. I, I really wish there was either there was better recorded documentation of that Senate meeting or that whatever where somebody actually stood up and was like, hey. Well, the thing that gets me is I'm like, I understand that America is great, but also America sucks, dude, because we don't do any of those things. No, no, no. You get caught four times napping at your desk and... One week. And so uh, make your make your plan. Uh, this is the last Wednesday of August, so it just passed, but in Buñol, Spain. Uh, Start for, planning for next for year. Tomatina. There's another one that this one I've actually seen a lot about in Gloucester, England. Uh, a lot of fun. This is Cooper's I uh, want Cooper's to a, cheese roll. I want to attend wig. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, here is the footage. Uh, this is every spring break holiday, brave participants chase a nine pound wheel of cheese down this steep hill, which you're witnessing there. Look at that poor girl in red, dude. And um, it's ranges between 60 and 40 degrees. So it is steep, steep. And people get for real injury. Yeah, I mean, look at these thing. guys. Yeah. Like, I want to... Look at this dude. I want to attend this. There's no possible way in Medics, my mid-40s. poor guy. And the best part about it, to me, <laughs> is that the prize is the cheese. Is the cheese There's no you? money. Yeah. There's not even a t-shirt or a medal. It's just like, well, you caught it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How... <laughs> <laughs> How good my, my friend here be? has taken up smoking as he's played That's the slot. not true, but no, it, it, is, not. it is bad. Uh, um, yeah, so the highlights of this are just a spectacular tumbles down the hill, honestly, the tomfoolery. Well, here's the deal. I want to go and drink beer and stand on the hill and watch people run down. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's the whole part of this one for me. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I, that better, that's got to be some good cheese. How did they come up with it? That's what I want to know. How did they come up with the idea for this? Because at some point, somebody... I like to imagine that what happened was someday somebody just flippantly rolled, let their hill, their cheese roll down a hill, and a bunch of dodo birds just chased right after it. And they were like, this has got legs. You know what invented this? Teenage boys. Mm. Yeah, I'll allow this it. This has teenage boy written all over it. One that does not have teenage boy written all over it is our next festival <laughs> coming to you straight. Oh yeah, this one has this one has significantly says middle aged woman. So the idea was, uh, it was an attempt by vendors. It was started by vendors, yeah. in the probably in, in the eighteen hundreds to creatively attract patrons to their stands. But it is called the Night of the Radishes, Noche de Robanos. In Oaxaca, Mexico, uh, quirky festival takes place on the 23rd, and they they carve elaborate figures and scenes out of radishes. Every bit of that is radish. No thanks. That is insane. That's the Last Supper. Sure, but radishes. I've seen the, this right here. Watching this, I've seen as much of it as I care to. Yeah, that's it for you. Yeah, huh? that was an awesome festival. It was officially Thank recognized you. as an event in 1897, uh, but thousands of people come to spectate and see the radishes. You will not be among them. I am going to remain confused. Well, do you have your passport <laughs> ready? And are you more interested in going to Lotbury, Thailand? Uh, yes, for the name of this one. I this was, is the when monkey I saw this buffet. List, super intrigued. Yeah, yeah. So they basically just set up this enormous feast of, of fruit and foods uh, and then turn the monkeys loose on it. 
that's a small picture. There's a tower coming up in a minute. Yeah, there it is. And they just let the monkeys go ham. You can look it up. You just do Monkey Buffet Festival. And it'll come up with that. But yeah. the origin of the event trace back to the late 80s <laughs> when the local mayor decided to honor the monkeys in the village as a, as a mayor should. Um, and it's known for historical ruins. But it is also <laughs> this hub of the monkey population in that part of the world. Uh, and so the rest, of the, the rest of the festival, like that's a part of it. The rest of the festival just celebrates the, the heritage and the tradition of the land. Um, what's funny is it was originally kind of a modest thing. They just put out some things for the monkeys, and it grew. Uh, it grew from there. What are you? What are you loving so much? I just am loving. You're sitting here just talking about the monkeys. <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to talk about the monkey buffet festival without without talking, talking about, about monkeys. the monkeys. <coughs> I liked this. I'm unclear on what the monk buffet or what the monk blessings. What is the monk blessing exactly? I, I have no idea. Um. I was skipping right on to the next one, which I would like to go to the location where this is, but I have no desire to take part in this. Well, let's go to Waikiki for Spam Jam. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This festival every year celebrating Hawaii's love for Spam takes place every <laughs> April and then features, uh, features Spam-inspired dishes from local restaurants, uh, Spam Musubi, Spam Burgers, even Spam-themed merchandise, live music, entertainment, it's the aloha meal, man. It, it blows my mind because there's so much great food that comes from Hawaii. Are you not a potted meat guy? Is that the thing? I No, I'm not. Have you ever had Spam? I have tasted Spam once. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. We were poor. My dad used to fry up some Spam sandwiches for us. I, I, like, I don't know. If yeah. you told me it was good, I'd probably try one. Oh, I'm not going to tell you that it's good. See? See? Then <laughs> why, not, why would anybody... Why would I go out of my way to have it? That's not what I'm saying. Um, well, what if... The next one what I grew if we up go attending. From Waikiki, and we just eat our fill of spam, hop on a plane, head to Munich, Germany for Oktoberfest. Don't you dare fill up on spam and get in an airplane. The with world's people. largest <laughs> beer festival from late September to the first week in October. Traditional Bavarian food and beer. Look at those crowds, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, I grew up um, a lot of years in Germany uh, as a military kid. Those crowds are insane. And Oktoberfest in every place is huge. Yep. But Oktoberfest in Munich is untouched. Oh, I can't even imagine. It's absolutely bonkers. And it's the funny thing was, it's not just when, the Oktoberfest style of beer. It's right. It's, it's everything. Yeah. When I was a kid, they used to give these little uh, rubber hammers with the squeakers on the end as the both ends. And kids would just run around and hit drunk people in the head. And so that's all you'd hear is the squeak of these hammers and that, you know, the drunk people just singing. And and that was that, that was my childhood. Well, huh? That was my childhood. <laughs> that explains uh, some. I'm just trying to process <laughs> the getting hit with a hammer while you're several. Oh, it's one deep. of those those squeaky hammers. It, it still feels <laughs> taking your life into your own hands a little bit. No. Eh, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, it's so crowded. Kids can run through. I just feel like this is one of those that I would uh, you. I mean, it's just when you think of festivals, right? Like Oktoberfest mm -hmm. is, and it's everything. It's the food. It's the German heritage. Yes, yeah. and this one's coming up all over the world. Um, we have yeah. Fredericksburg right here, which is a, a very strong. Oh, and, and New Fredericksburg Braunfels. makes our list here in a minute. And oh, okay, and uh, yeah, no, that's right. And then uh, we have New Braunfels, so we yeah. have some really strong. Though New Braunfels is more later October does Worst Fest, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. good German town. We're gonna find some beer for sure. This next one I'm not interested in at all. This is the Fallsmere Frog Lake Festival in Fallsmere, Florida. Are you not a frog leg guy? It's a January festival celebrating frog, frog legs. No, I do like gator tail um, and then just flirty and cuisine. But as you can see there, it's just a whole thing. It's just a whole festival. Um, I do like the shirt. It's cool art. That is a cool shirt. So The, the picture with all the trucks there... That looks like Trader's Village. I mean, that looks like any other So that's the thing place. for me. So one that didn't make the list is locally here in the town where we lived in before we moved is Holotus, and they do that every year, the Cornival, which is right. a nod to corn. This was a big um, corn-growing region. Uh, and the truth of it is, man, the f like, if you live near a local fair, you should just go. Oh, Certainly. They're just, it's just a, it's just fun, yep. right? And you get to check that region. It's culture. We just had the Kendall County Fairgrounds, had the Kendall County Fair right. this past weekend. Uh, and so you get to taste And it went mostly that, well. It went mostly well. We're not even going to mention what didn't go well. But it's just an <laughs> opportunity to taste local culture, to right. connect with your community, to get out. And 
I don't know, man. Maybe this is an overreach, but I'm just like in a in a day and age where we are, in my opinion, markedly less connected to one another. Oh, hundred percent. Looking for creative reasons to get outside of the box mm-hmm. is is huge, and I yeah, just think a good, a good fair is one. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. Absolutely, um, man. If you're not up for eating at the last one, you are certainly not up for eating at the next Head one. Head on down to Fredericksburg, Texas, my friends, for the Texas Testicle Festival. You heard him right. This he festival said festival celebrates a variety of fried animal testicles, often referred to as Rocky Mountain oysters, including those from bulls, lambs, and pigs. That's a lot of balls. It there, says Kev. including bulls, lambs, and but pigs, but does not to. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There is a testicle eating contest. Have you ever have you ever had I have testicles. had Rocky Mountain oysters. I have as well. Well, is Rocky Mountain oysters only beef or is it all testicles? I was under the impression that that specific phrase was bull. Okay. I have not had bull. I've had pig. <laughs> I've had goat. Okay. I've had bull. Yeah. I've not had pig or goat. So uh, there are, which I can't, I can't <laughs> words I did not <coughs> ever imagine myself saying there is a testicle eating contest along mm-hmm. with live music. <laughs> and I feel like there has to be a lot of beer, uh, tongue in cheek atmosphere. Uh, Fredericksburg's kind of famous for theirs. I, I really just find it funny they use tongue in cheek along <laughs> with testicle <laughs> eating <laughs> contest You're in the not same helping line. My cough. What's alarming? <laughs> what's alarming is that there are actually a lot of Rocky Mountain oyster festivals. Uh, Fredericksburg does not oh, yeah. have the market. No, not even a not long even close. There's a lot stretch. of places. If you want to eat some ball, you can eat some ball. Yeah. This one sounded fun. It also sounded most like the town where it is. Uh, the Roadkill Cook-Off <laughs> yes. in Marlinton, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Uh, this Squirrel, festival possum, dishes. and raccoon. <laughs> yeah. I have not ever now, here's the thing about that festival, because I looked this one up when I saw it on the oh, list. Oh, I did too. That they make dishes from animals that are typically found as roadkill. But it's not, not actual roadkill. Right. Yeah. Not actual roadkill. You ever had any possum? No, I've never had possum. I have not either. I, I maybe have had squirrel. That would be the only one that's even a maybe. I, I don't think I've had squirrel. But these are... I've never had raccoon. When you, in, when you lived up in North Carolina and then further up... In Virginia. These were your people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know people that... Do you remember the story you told me about the kid in the lobster tank? Yes. The kid asked me that. Diddy. Diddy. Them things at your finners. <laughs> and you're like, what language is that? Yeah. Yeah, boy, them things at your fingers. Yeah. Like, what, what is that? And I just sat and watched. I couldn't, like, I, I would have followed them around as long as I could have. Yeah. I really felt like that was National Geographic. Didn't the kid ask if he could go lick a pole well, at lick a, point? Lick a pole and the window. Diddy, I go lick that pole. Diddy, Diddy can I lick that pole? <laughs> yeah, boy, going ahead. <laughs> oh my god, I do. La- and I was like, "There is no possible way." He just asked what I think I heard. I am laughing like an eighty-year-old woman who chain smoked her entire life. I'm, I'm serious. I think you did. You get a slot machine for the garage or something, and you're just I out wish. there with. I wish with some Virginia Slims. I'm really sorry to you guys. This is going to drive down our <laughs> viewer count. I'm certain of it. <laughs> Of those festivals, uh, you can't say Oktoberfest. Which is your next? Which one are you most <laughs> interested in? Um, you know what? The one I'm actually the one I'm most interested in is the cheese rolling because I want to attend just a, yep. a spectacle. And then the one in Spain. Yeah, but that's um, more about I want to go to Spain. Yeah, it, it's everything in Spain is awesome. Yeah, it, and it, it's all that. I, I don't really care to. I'll, I'll throw a tomato or two, but I don't want to stand there and get pelted with tomatoes. Were there any that you felt like I missed? Were there any any festivals that you're like, oh, this one was cool? Well, there is a big, um, and I forget the name of it. There's a big festival in India every year, um, and I'm trying to think of the name of it. Holy, Holy Festival in India. That uh, it, it's kind of a. If you're familiar with Diwali, it's kind of a Diwali esque type celebration um, from an outsider's view it looks similar okay um, other than that one there's a pizza fest in Italy and uh, there's a worldwide dinner in Blanc uh, where people just on the same day they all dress in white and they go have these big elaborate oh, picnics fun. all oh, over the world that sounds Parisian um, and so that happens everywhere so the, the oh pe- that's like across the globe yeah yeah that happens oh. worldwide all at the same time let's do it next year we'll get some baguettes and some cheese some wine just a couple of dudes having a picnic. Yeah, that won't look funny at all. Let's do win. that. Yeah. 
Um, but those, those ones, the, the pizza fest, uh, holy and, uh, um, the dinner in Blanc. Yeah. Yeah. Th- it was really tough and I decided to lean into the funny. There was all kinds of oh, ways sure. we could have gone. Sure. Um, I did see that they just, they just, uh, topped the largest pizza. I don't remember the, remember a while back we had the square they footage just, they and all just that. passed it and it was something ob- obnoxiously large. Well, there's no point. Yeah, there, no there is no point, and so th- things like that, I'm I'm out. I'm just no, I don't want to come watch you make the biggest cinnamon roll or the biggest pizza and waste however much you're wasting. Yeah, no, I just really need big enough for me. Yeah, it's the only size I'm after. Yeah, mine, and uh, you know whatever. Well, what's on your agenda? What do you got coming up? <laughs> we made it through our festivals. It was a slow food news week. There wasn't really much going on. Yeah, not a not a ton happening. Um, now, one of the things I do want to talk so. We talked about Oktoberfest, which is a huge one, and it's it's big for lots of reasons and, and in lots of places. I saw that the first um, food festival, harvest festival in the U.S. was documented in 1821 in California, and it was celebrating a big harvest that they had that year. And then I saw the Iowa this State Fair. This is why we don't drink sodas on live. Yeah, I always go with my yeah. water, and I didn't today. Yeah. Um, the Iowa State Fair is started in 1896, and again, same thing. It was farmers mainly trading crops oh, and trading that. things. Uh, um, I bet the Iowa State Fair is actually pretty good. I bet it's awesome. And so those were two of the those. And when we were talking about um, Oktoberfest, it reminded me the, the coolest festival that I went to was Reunification Day in Germany. Oh, wow. And so I was there. I lived there. I was a teenager when the wall came down. This is two times in this one episode that you've made it kind of stoic and. Well, you know, I don't mean to. I'm <laughs> it's, it's usually not me that's going to go serious. But uh, when the Berlin Wall came down a couple min- months later, they had an official reunification day of East West Germany and West Germany. And that was uh, uh, in October of 1990. And we. Went over, you know, we, we were actually living at a border guard station. We were with the uh, Armored Cavalry, the 11th Armored Cavalry in Fulda, Germany. And that base disappeared after the border went away because there was nothing there to protect anymore. But to be clear, because I, w- I know you wouldn't want anybody thinking he was cool. Your dad was a meteorologist. He didn't fight. Oh, no, he didn't fight. Yeah. He, the only person he was going to hit was a kid in his own house. Right. But that was... Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Um, but then uh, there know. it is the third time. <laughs> <laughs> it took a turn. I wasn't expecting. Didn't see that. Um, eat anyway. a bag, Scott. Eat a bag. So uh, yeah, satchel. Uh, but anyway, the the reunification day was super cool. We went into the closest East German town from uh, across from us in the border, and we had you know bratwurst and you know mm-hmm. pomfrets and and all of that. And we actually got to go through the town, and they hadn't. Nothing in modernized, nothing like that. And you got to kind of see what living in that kind of communist yeah, yeah. environment looks like. Which I've obviously I didn't grow up there, but I've heard that the the difference was stark. It was like stepping out of color TV into a black and white world. Oh, absolutely. Because, OK, so the, the main street had shops. I mean, it had places where you could buy things and their nicest things were in the window. But the things in the window were soap and toilet paper and the essentials. That's so crazy. There, there wasn't like a nice dress or a purse or shoes or, or, or a computer. Well, there weren't computers. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it was, yeah. it was uh, those things. Is. There was, at, at the time when the wall came down, it was a, there was a th- if you wanted a car, you got on the list, and the, the government made their cars, and it was a 13-year wait. That's on the communist side. On the East German side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Jeez, they made man. a car, two door, four door, same car. It was it was not an awesome car. I'm sad. <laughs> I don't mean to make you sad. Yeah, I'm a feeler. But that was, uh, but that yeah, that was some of it. Um, well, to bring the joy back, good news just announced because I checked this right before we came in. Uh, Taco Bell's Baja Blast Gelato is officially here, Kev. So. I know what you'll be having for dessert tonight. No. You'll sleep a little better knowing that Baja Blast Gelato. I have to feel like Baja, like Mountain Dew, is a gross affront to gelato makers everywhere. Oh, it's got to be. Someone that hates Italians was like, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'll get them. I'll get them. 
Oh, <laughs> this was a good time. It usually is. It usually is. We got anything? We got anything coming up? We're gonna, we we haven't. No, we got nine episodes to fifty. Yep. So we've we've got a plan out of fifty, um, but I don't think we have anything that's. You know, between here and there. Let's do a. Let's find something. I'll find something. You know, let's. We have Oktoberfest coming up around us, so yeah. there'll be one in Bernie. There'll be one in Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. I'm sure there'll be one in Cashville. It just won't be as good. Well, yeah, yeah. We can do. We could. We can go attend one. We we need to hit one and get some footage. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Cool. Maybe next week we'll do another. Like we'll try another. I don't know. We'll do something fun. Tune in next week. <laughs> it'll it'll we'll be, be as surprised, surprised as you are. Absolutely. Uh, as always, we thank you guys for tuning in. Can I hum along this time or no? You can hum along in the outro, but before you do that, Kevin, what do the good folks need to do? Keep your girls hot, your beer cold. All right, folks, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. 41 of these things in the can. We'll see you next week. <laughs> no, go ahead and hum. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs>